Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to be again with you. So, this is a case of 2D, 3D TUE guided mitral valve and valve procedure. This is a patient that had mitral valve pyprothesis a long time ago and now presented with degenerated, severely stenotic, as well as regurgitant mitral pyprothesis. And because it is a high surgical risk, the decision was to go for percutaneous mitral valve and valve procedure using an Edward Sibian valve to be implanted within the mitral pyoprothesis. So starting from the mid-esophageal view, you can here appreciate how big the lift atrium is. This is the mitral pyoprothesis and from here you can see the leaflets are very strict and restricted in motion and thickened. This is a long axis view. Again, the leaflets hardly opens. That's why you can see significant aliasing. And you can see also a regurgitant jet here back into the lift atrium. This is the aortic valve. This shadow is because of the piprothetic ring here, the same ring of the mitral piprothesis. It casts the shadow uh, just over the interventricular inter inter septum. That's why you can see it clearly. But this is a long axis view, aorta. Ascending aorta, aortic valve, mitral pyoprothesis, and you can see the, the posterior mitral annulus, anterior mitral annulus, and so on. The gradient resting under general anesthesia was 10 uh, millimeters of mercury, mean diastolic pressure gradient across the mitral pyoprothesis, and this can explain why the patient was really symptomatic. Okay, this is a 3D TUE for the mitral pyprothesis from the left atrial aspect. So I'm looking now from the left atrium. These are the three cusps of the pyprothesis and this is the prosthetic ring. You can see it here. And I think everybody can appreciate how fixed and restricted these two cusps are. The opening is very tiny here just due to opening of the uh, posteriorly located cusp. We cannot name cusps now but this is prosthetic cusps. This is the aortic valve, more or less at 12 o'clock position, the interatrial septum, so the right atrium should be here in that way, and left atrial appendage is under the comedian ridge that way. So it's a very tiny hole of opening in diastole for the mitral pyprothesis. Flipping that over, you can look to the mitral valve from the left ventricular aspect. This is the short axis of the left ventricle, and you can see again three cusps of the mitral pyprothesis opening very uh, tightly here and that explains why the mitral valve is very stenotic this is a 3d color full volume of the mitral pyprothesis with some tilting so you can see from the side the aorta is here and here is the ring itself you can see a regurgitant jet back into the left atrium and an aliasing jet into the left ventricle due to the stenotic mitral valve Assessment of the septum is very important. Here is the bicaval view, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, left atrium, right atrium, and this is the stachium valve, so the IVC is here and SBC is here. And putting an exoplane into that, it will give you something like the short axis base view, aortic valve to the right, and the posterior part of the septum to the left. It starts usually by putting the aortic valve to the left of the screen, but you can right invert that to make it more or less uh, um, like the, the common display for this view with keeping the aortic valve to the right of the screen and the posterior part of the septum to the left of the screen. So here is anterior, posterior, superior, inferior. Like the mitral clip, we usually prefer to puncture here at the superior and posterior part of the septum. As we said before, any transeptal puncture procedure, we, you really need to be in the posterior part of the septum. You never go for the anterior part of the septum, otherwise you will have the risk of puncturing the septum and going into the aortic root, which is very dangerous. So any transeptal puncture, we usually prefer to be the posterior part of the interatrial septum, but it depends on the procedure. Some procedures, you really need to be in the superior part. Some other procedures, like the left atrial appendage uh, closure, you need to be in the inferior part of the septum and so on, okay? 
Assessment of the 3D, I've seen that from me many times before. This is the whole interatrial septum from the right atrial aspect. By the rattle maneuver, you can see superior vena cavity opening. Here's the IVC, here's the coronary sinus, aortic valves here, and this is the aortic road ascending aorta. This faint part is the fossa. Flipping that over for 180 degrees, you will see the septum from the left atrial aspect. Again, this is the fossa, the faint part, and this is the openings of the pulmonary veins. Okay, now transeptal puncture using the X plane, catheter is coming from the IVC here, tenting the superior portion of the septum and putting an X plane over this it will give you the anterior posterior view, short axis base view, and you can see here that we are really tenting in the posterior part of the septum, which is a very good position for this particular procedure. Going on, this is after puncturing. You can see here by 3D the catheter coming and puncturing posteriorly and superiorly. And looking to the left atrial aspect of the interatrial septum, you can see the catheter coming from the septum towards you here. And this is the pulmonary veins. Now, introducing the catheter into the mitral valve with the wire. You can see it started to separate one of the commissures here. Then puncturing with two wires to help the stability and passing balloons and other stuff. You can see here the crimp Edward Sabin prosthesis is passing through the septum. This septum needed to be dilated first with a balloon and you can see the balloon carrying the prosthesis is passing through the interatrial septum now. And you have to wait till you see the whole valve with the balloon inside the left atrium in order to start navigation. And I'm waiting for this moment till now. Now the whole valve is inside the left atrium as you can appreciate. Okay. Now atrial view. You can see the prosthesis down here. The catheter is coming from the right side, puncturing the septum. This is the valve and this is the other wire. Both of them are crossing the prosthesis down to the left ventricle. Now after positioning the valve inside the mitral pipe prosthesis, you can see here the positioning and then the ballooning. I'm just forwarding that because now deployment of the Edward Sabian within the pipe prosthetic ring will happen now. A lot of bubbles will be obscuring the scene and this is the assessment in 2D with color for the newly implanted Edward Sabian valve within the old pyrosthetic mitral process you can see leaflets now are opening very well left atrial appendage is here and clear with color there are tiny jets of barovalvular regurgitation laminar flow not high velocity jet that goes away quickly after stopping and reversing the heparin this is another view just to confirm that there are no leaks. You should sweep by the angle from 0 to 180 to see if there are any holes around the newly implanted prosthesis. If there is nothing, you have to go down to the stomach and assess the LVOT gradient. Before that, you can check now the gradient that was 10 now it became 1 as mean gradient across the newly implanted prosthesis. This is a 3D TUE for the mitral uh, valve, the newly implanted one. You can see the three cusps now are opening very nicely. This is from the LV aspect. You can see again, now the patient has no stenotic mitral valve at all. Going down to the stomach, either deep transgastric view or the long axis, mid-gastric view. You can see the LVOT and this is the prosthesis. Putting color here, you can see some aortic regurgitation which, which was there from the beginning. Otherwise, there is no flow acceleration through the LVOT, and you can confirm that with Doppler as well. This is a very low velocity, so no LVOT obstruction, which is a common complication that you should take care about. This is the final result here after implantation, and this is before, so you can see the huge difference and the huge benefit that the patient got after doing 
this percutaneous intervention without open heart surgery. Thank you so much. I hope to see you in next videos and goodbye.